uh, we're going to deal with colour management and colour management is hugely important to ensuring that your end result um, from the time that you take the photo to the, the time that it comes out of a, a printer or, or another output is, is totally correct. You need to profile your camera, you need to profile your screen, you also need to ensure that your image enhancement manipulation software like uh, Photoshop is, is profiled and, and colour managed correctly and finally you, you definitely need to ensure that your, your printer or your output is, is profiled with, with the correct colour management as well. So um, dealing with the camera side of things it's really important that you set your camera up very very effectively uh, with the colour space side of things and on your menu and even the little small cameras have a menu uh, with colour space and, and generally they do but I set my camera up to Adobe 98 which is uh, an industry standard in the colour space that uh, is quite acceptable. sRGB is another colour space that's used uh, but I think probably worldwide uh, Adobe 98 is probably the most popular uh, profiling for a camera. The other thing that affects colour is white balance. Uh, there's a whole lot of settings which are on the back of the camera or, on, or, or within your uh, camera. Uh, they have an effect, but in reality you can um, use auto white balance and, and that would generally be fine. There's a number of different ways of colour managing your screen. Um, we've got our screen here. You can do it manually with a test print and just set the screen up and um, play around with the little little buttons and dials on your screen to get something to match your, your, your output. Uh, but the most uh, effective way is to use a spider or a, a little um, computerised colour management tool. The software reads the information and creates profiles for your screen that will, will have matched your camera and, and the file that you, you'll generate to create an output off the printer. Uh, so that's, that's a really important part. There's a lot of different colour management tools. Uh, they all work similarly but then differently. Uh, there's not the need to actually invest in a, a spider like this. Most uh, laboratories, um, places that are reputable that, that print will, will actually supply you with profiles or the spider to use on your own screen so that you can you can actually colour manage things really, really effectively. Another aspect of colour management is the room that you're viewing your uh, output in or even your screen. Uh, you really need to be daylight balanced. You There are a lot of different light sources around that portray green, red, blue, uh, but daylight balance is, is what you're looking for. Within the chain of colour management is the colour settings within your image manipulation and hardware software like Photoshop and uh, these packages all have uh, colour settings and I'll just show you. Uh, in Photoshop we'll go to edit, we'll go to colour settings and there we have all the information that we need um, as a profile. So we've got Adobe RGB here is our RGB setting and we've got a few other settings down here but you really don't have to worry about those too much because it's the RGB setting that, that is important at this stage. Uh, when you get down a little bit further um, you will need um, other profiles if you're doing more specialised sort of work but generally we're fine with that. The final link in the chain as far as your uh, colour settings and colour management is concerned is your output, your hard copy. It's really vital that your settings for your hard copy uh, are well employed. A printer like this R3000 uh, Epson printer will have um, profiles for each of the different paper types that that it, um, the Epson put out. And this is semi-gloss so uh, you'll see that this print here matches the screen behind, which is really fantastic. It doesn't matter what the printer is, uh, they, they all have colour settings and colour profiles. It's a matter of using the software correctly to ensure that the paper that you're using matches the profile that the, the printer provides. Uh, many of the smaller printers, the cheaper printers, uh, you can get this sort of quality out of them by just clicking the right button within the software. Uh, it's really, really important that, that you use the software. If you don't use the software in the profiling, you will end up with a mucky, um, inconsistent result. If you use the software and you've got everything in the chain totally correct, all your colours, colour settings right throughout that chain, no links broken, you'll end up with a good result. The final little area that we're going to talk about in respect of colour management and your settings 
is relative to your extra lighting, like a flash unit. You might be bouncing it off the roof and it might be white or it might be uh, a wooden roof whereby your colour temperature will warm up a wee bit. Uh, you've got little uh, filters that you can put over the front of your camera and that will change things yet again. So just be careful there. There's also extra lighting that are actually off the camera uh, that ha also have different lighting and, and colour effects that, that come from it. So um, yeah, as I said, be careful. And finally, just your lens quality. Uh, your glass is really, really important. Look after it. Uh, I had a man a wee while ago that uh, came in, said that he was having problems with uh, his output. It turned out that the back element of the lens um, was really murky. You could hardly see through it. The front wasn't actually much better and uh, that will have an implication on, on the end result. So just remember, if you keep all the links in the chain correct, all aligned, uh, you'll be sweet, you'll end up with great output.